one of my questions was going to be, where, uh, where do you think he is? Well, I mean, I, well, we knew he was in China at one point. So, so we should say the, the lawsuits, the civil lawsuits, 2016 in the US, and then in 2018, the US and Malaysia both um, file criminal charges against Jola. Um, and at the same time, the prime minister of Malaysia, Najib Razak, loses power in an election in Malaysia and he's, he's arrested. Um, and I think his, Najib's verdict, by the way, might come out today um, in Asia or, or tomorrow or something like that. So um, <clears throat> Jolo is told by the prime minister to, to get out of the country and he goes to China. Um, and this is, this is where the story gets very complicated, but it's just unbelievably interesting. He's able to do deals. So, so Najib at that point is still uh, prime minister it's before he loses power in the elections. And he's able to do these infrastructure deals with China and Malaysia, and they steal even more money. This is not the 1MDB fraud, this is just post 1MDB, to use to, to, to fill some of the holes. And he uses the, a friend in Kuwait, who's the former prime minister's son, <coughs> excuse me, um, and he's able, to, he's able to sort of keep doing deals. And uh, China has not um, said anything about it, but we got minutes of a meeting. We know that Jolo's protector in China at one point was a guy called Sun Li Jun, who was uh, head of the domestic security forces. That guy has just been um, arrested for corruption in China um, without any comment by, the, by Xi Jinping's government. So what we, we believe there's a sort of a clearing of house going on in China about this, but Jolo is still there. And of course, he's a very useful pawn for anyone who, who holds him, right? Because, you know, he knows all this stuff um, about where the money's gone. He, he still controls a lot of money, too. And he's still paying his lawyers, um, which we don't understand how, how he can do, but he's still paying his lawyers in the U.S., millions of dollars. So, so uh, any idea where he is in China or just kind of the, the general idea is just in China somewhere? Well, this isn't a joke. He was definitely in Wuhan at one point. We have, we have sort of intelligence that he was in Wuhan. Um, this is before the, um, the, the virus started. Um, since then, to be honest, I that would be very early this year or actually late last year. Since then, I don't know exactly where he is, but um, I, I'm not sure whether he can travel. It's possible he can travel or until recently he's been able to travel into the Middle East, the UAE, to, because a lot of people are trying to cover this up, right? For example, um, the UAE was involved involved in this, that Sheikh Mansour, the owner of Man City uh, uh, Football Club, soccer club in the US, in, uh, in England, um, he, his boat, the $650 million Topaz, which is now called the A+, was partly financed with money from, stolen from 1MDB. So there's, there's, no, there's a lot of people who don't really want this, you know, uh, to be raked over. And so he's, it's possible Jolo can travel to those countries too on private jets. But I imagine the Chinese authorities are keeping him pretty much in their sights, right? Um, because they want to control him. So. Yeah, absolutely. And, and is the thought process when you say he's got control over money, is that something that is just nobody really understands, but he's obviously paying some of these bills that we know are, are expensive? Or is it something where um, we think he's literally walking around with duffel bags of cash? Or kind of how do you think that somebody who uh, is really this like international uh, wanted man uh, still has control over money and can kind of do some things? Well, he moved money into Chinese Yuan for sure, because when he was trying to pay off some of these corrupt deals I just mentioned, they were moving it around via ICBC, which is a Chinese bank in Yuan. And the reason to do that is to avoid, uh, if you do a dollar transaction, you could end up getting caught by the correspondent bank, right? It has to be, it has to be checked. And so he's basically been frozen out of the US system, but he's, I think he's still got access to, to Thai baht or Chinese Yuan and all, of the, all these currencies. He tried to buy a bank in I think the Comoros Islands at one point uh, post all this coming out, right? So you could control money. And obviously China is becoming a bigger, bigger player in the global economy. And so you can do stuff with Yuan and, you, and, it's, and it's not, you know, it's, it's to a degree a bit more internationalized than it used to be, even though they still have a closed capital, uh, capital account, right? Um, so that's, that's, I think, how he's operating. Um, but it's incredible to me that the big question I have is Cobra, uh, Cobra and Kim, right? His lawyers, they're, they're, they're a big law firm, Shillings in the UK. They're getting paid money. Um, they, Cobra and Kim uh, had to file a form, a FARA form, which is to show to the U.S. government that they're lobbying for him. And they're not, they're not obviously paid by him. They're paid, they were paid by a Thai guy, a Thai friend of Jolo's. But, but I don't understand how you can say, well, you know, we know that this money is not the proceeds of crime. You know, lawyers, everyone's, everyone's allowed a lawyer, right? And, that's, uh, and Jolo has not been proven guilty. You know, he's, he's only, he's only been, he hasn't turned up to face the charges, but he hasn't been proven guilty. So that's fair. He needs a lawyer. But, for, but for, for when it comes to um, taking lawyers taking money to do lobbying, to send letters, to try to stop a book being published, like a billion-dollar whale, 
I mean, th then I have questions about, well, how, do you, how are those lawyers proving that the, the, the money was not tainted? Um, extremely, extremely interesting situation. Yeah, the, the part to me that I think just blows my mind is you've got a guy who, uh, it almost seems in some weird way, uh, has a very tainted reputation, but has become emboldened after the scam was uh, uncovered. Like, you, you almost get like one of these weird things where you, you could imagine this guy is like bragging about the fact that there's a book written about him. And he just forgets the part of like, that it's written about a scam. Right, like, like it's almost like the, the fame and the, the egotistical nature of all of this is driving him to do more and more to some degree, it, it sounds like from some of these stories. Well, his, well, his favorite book um, we learned was uh, the book about Mark Rich. So Mark, Mark Rich was the oil trader who ended up getting um, uh, charged to the US and he lived his life out in Switzerland on, on the shores of Lake Lugano in a, in a luxurious villa. And, and I think Jolo sort of saw this guy as his model in a way. And, and, and Rich was pardoned by Bill Clinton on his last day in office. Um, and so I think Jolo really saw that as his end game to get a sort of a pardon. Um, and this, as I said, the story is super complicated, but making it even more complicated, the, the, the party of Najib Razak, the former prime minister who's been arrested, um, is, is now coming back to power in Malaysia. And so there's this idea that maybe all the charges will get dropped in Malaysia if that party solidifies its grip on power and then Jolo might be able, might actually be able to come back to the country. I mean, it's not, un, not, not unbelievable. I mean, it's a very, very corrupt place. So.